This is the RV Advisor Podcast with your host, Tom Alexander. Get all the latest information, trends, advice from experts, stories from the road, and more in the world of recreational vehicles. Now, here's Tom. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RV Advisor Podcast. My name is Tom Alexander, and I am joined today from a gentleman a little bit of a distance away from us here in South Florida. It is Pete Schmidt, and Pete is speaking to us from Queensland, Australia, and the great uh, continent of uh, Oceania. Did I get all that right, Pete? Did I, did I do yeah, it? Yeah, I pretty did much okay. spot on, Tom. <laughs> I did okay in, in, in geography. I, I was a big fan of, of geography, and so, you know, I'm trying to get a handle on everything. So you're on the, the East Coast of Australia. That's correct. Yeah, uh, East Coast, uh, very similar to like your Florida. Yes, where where we are, and uh, in terms of terrain and, and uh, tropics and everything, we're we're in a similar, uh, uh, I guess, terrain and uh, general, you know, uh, climatolog climatological uh, zone or however we want to describe that. And uh, you're, you, we were talking beforehand a little bit, and you said that, uh, you know, like us here in the States, you're making, uh, you know, your usual uh, adjustments with uh, COVID going on, and, and uh, it's up and down, I guess, the way it is here. Yeah, it's, um, it's it, travel is very restricted between the states. Um, so we are sort of locked into our own state of Queensland at the moment. Um, we do still have free restrictions within our state of Queensland. Uh, we just can't cross the borders at the moment, um, just right. until everyone gets a, a bit of a grip on it. There's six, is it, are there six states? Seven. Seven, seven yeah. states. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and what's, well, what's well, the... Two, two territories, uh, but for, for uh, I guess to stop confusion, we'll call them states. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and what's the big city in Queensland? What's what's uh, the... our capital city is Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, often Brisbane? often heard as Brisbane. I guess I, I often hear that said, but it's uh, it's pronounced Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah, Brisbane. Yeah. yeah, we we we. I've heard Brisbane probably more here in the states than Brisbane, but. Uh, We'll follow your lead on that one, and uh, and are you close to Brisbane, or, or is that a bit a bit of a ways? No, it's it's about a uh, 45, 50 minute drive from where we are on the Gold Coast. Gotcha, gotcha. Now we want to talk about your. For, I love the name of this traveling Schmidt house. Your last name is Schmidt, and it's yes. uh, an intended, I'm guessing, play on words to some degree. Traveling. Yeah, was... Traveling Schmidt house. Love it. Yeah, we don't don't mind taking the the the, uh, <laughs> the Mickey out of ourselves. Right, that's fantastic. How did this How did this originate? And and uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, origin of this. Uh, look, my, my wife and I were just. Uh, I guess we wanted to see our own country, a, a lot of our own country, and we hummed and hard for years. And I said, well, what do we do? And I said, you know what? Let's just buy a caravan and let's just go. Um, let's let's have a look around. Our, this is pre-COVID, obviously. Yeah. And um, uh, when we started, uh, we, we sold up everything that we had, poured the money into the van and, and the car and took off. And I said, well, I suppose we should document this somehow. And, and we sat around for, a, uh, we had a, a couple of glasses of wine and um, thought, well, what do we come up with for a name and how do we do this? And, and, and hence came forth the Travelling Schmidt House. Um, uh, and and the, the way it came about was that uh, we'd suffered a, uh, a, not a, not a horrible situation, but just, just something didn't quite go our way. And it, it all turned relatively to, if, if I have to say it, it turned to Schmidt. If, if yes, I want to say yeah. it that way, right? Uh, and that's where the name came up from. And just says, "Oh, that's that, that'll be just our luck. This is a traveling Schmidt house," and and that's where we came up with the name. Yeah, that's terrific. Uh, and I think we can all relate to that uh, when things uh, don't exactly go our way. Uh, we've, uh, you know, we've heard uh, 
Schmidt show, if I may, if I, <laughs> so we, it, it happens, it happens. Yeah, I, I'm sort of blessed and not blessed of having yeah. a last name. <laughs> I, I got you. Well, I, I grew up here, uh, I grew up in uh, north of uh, Florida in, uh, in Pennsylvania where we had a, I grew up in the 70s and there was a great baseball player who I idolized, he was a Hall of Famer, his name was Mike Schmidt, maybe you heard of him. But uh, he he's um, he was tremendous, and uh, so when I hear the name, when I see the name Schmidt, I always think of either him or there was also Schmidt's beer, uh, which I think might be around still if you look really hard for it. But uh, so for me, the name Schmidt has really positive, great connotations. So I'll I'll, I'll tell oh, you. I'm that. pleased. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We're talking with Pete Schmidt from. Uh, traveling Schmidt House, and uh, you can find Pete and his wife on Instagram. What's your wife's name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah, yeah. So, so yeah. Pete, Pete and Sarah are on Instagram, and uh, you can kind of track their adventures. We're going to learn more about all that when we come back. We're going to take a quick break and and uh, learn a whole bunch of more things here from the great uh, state of Queensland in Australia. This is the RV Advisor Podcast, back in just a moment. Hey, RV owners and those thinking about owning. Want to maximize the fun and minimize the hassle of buying an RV? You need GPS. It's Gigi's personal service. Our $350 package gets you, me, the expert advice, and a host of outstanding services. Visit thervadvisor.com. We are back on the RV Advisor podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. I was speaking with Pete Schmidt from Queensland, Australia. And Pete and his wife Sarah uh, have the Traveling Schmidt House, the Traveling Schmidt House, which you can check out on their Instagram page. Is that the Instagram page? Just Traveling Schmidt House? Is that where you got to go? Yes, go? it is. All right, very good. And um, uh, Pete, you know, we were talking for a moment in the break, and you said that recently, the last three weeks or so, you've been kind of stationary, but under normal circumstances, you travel quite a bit throughout the entire country or continent, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, it is a country and a continent. Um, and, and it is uh, uh, very interesting because I would imagine, not too unlike the United States, there's a tremendous uh, variety in terms of uh, terrain, um, mountainous and tropical and different kinds of things and desert and and everything else so um absolutely yeah. uh you, you can uh, from our own uh, home base in the gold coast in queensland uh we, we can travel up and over the mountain ranges and then all of a sudden just be in a, a, a plateau which will go on for miles and miles and it's just mm -hmm. desert um and then all of a sudden you will hit a uh, a tropical beach site um it's it's quite unique yeah wow it it uh, it just sounds incredible uh it, it you know i don't know if if i'll get get there but i can tell you it's on my bucket list uh, australia new zealand and that part of the world i know is uh got so much to offer uh from a, from not only a cultural standpoint, but visually, uh, there's just, it's just spectacular. Uh, I've seen pictures and, and uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes we here in America have a somewhat uh, homogenized view of different point, points on the globe. Um, and so we, we look at things, it's like, oh, okay, we think we know uh, exactly what to expect, but I'm sure there are things there that are very, very different, uh, oh, that look, are unexpected goes, surprises. Yeah, look, it can go the same way as well. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, due to television, we get this impression of America, of um, uh, your big Los Angeles city and your big New York City. Right. There's so much more to it than that, and that's just like Australia. There is just so much more to what you see on the television. And, yeah. uh, and I guess without visiting and doing it for yourself, you'll never know. No, you'll you'll never know, uh, but it, you will know if you decide to go. I had a, a person who I grew up next door to, a neighbor who 
was a kind of a bit of a world traveler, uh, an older lady who was, um, had been widowed, but she, she uh, loved to travel. And one of the places she went uh, was Australia. And she spent a, a, an, almost an entire, uh, well, for us, it would be uh, summer here, there it's winter. And she spent, and she, she uh, brought back all kinds of uh, little artifacts and I still have the boomerang she gave me. Uh, <laughs> from when I was a little kid. But I, I, you know, it was, it just seemed to, she just spoke so highly of her time there and she just really, really loved it. Um, and yeah, and it, I brought up the seasons and you know, you're in the Southern hemisphere and we're here in the Northern hemisphere. So it is a uh, exact opposite. And yes, the water does go yep. down the drain <clears throat> and in the opposite direction and all those things. Uh, yeah, look, we're, we're just about to hit spring in about two days. Um, Yep. Uh, but it, but even during, we've just gone through our winter. And if you're in the state that I'm in, of Queensland, uh, we can, as you can see, I'm still in a t-shirt. Um, and that's a standard winter for us up here in Queensland. Uh, if you did that down in Victoria, like where Melbourne is or Sydney, uh, you would literally be an icicle if you wore a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole other whole other thing. Uh, just like here. I mean, you know, we're, like I said, we were uh, in Florida near Miami. And um, I, you can honestly say uh, that, you know, the, the winters are beautiful. Uh, and it's kind of a lot of the reason we live here. We enjoy living here. But in the summers, it tends to be uh, oppressively humid and very, very hot. So we, yep. look, forward, we look forward to the months of uh, November through April here. And uh, it, it's very, very nice where I suppose where you are, it becomes somewhat oppressive. Uh, yeah, yes, the, the, the Queensland is, is a huge, huge state. It's a beautiful and huge state. And, and uh, we're down the very bottom of the, uh, the state in the corner. Uh, mm -hmm. When you travel up to the top of the state, I'm not sure if you've heard of places like Cairns, um, uh, all those sort of places are townsville. You go up there, heading, I, I guess if, if you would have maybe heard of Darwin, that's over in the Northern Territory, but that's heading up the top of, of uh, Australia. Yeah. Um, and when you're up those tops, oh, oh my goodness, it is so hot. It is yeah. incredibly hot. Yeah, so, so hotter to the north and cooler to the yes. south, which, is, which is the opposite of here in the States. You know, it's, it's the exact yeah. opposite. The further south you go, of course, it, it, it heats up. Um, now, your travels uh, sound, you know, like they, they've got to be very interesting. Is it the kind of thing where you and your wife sort of team up and say, okay, you know what, let's, let's pick out a few destinations on the map and let's head there? Or is it more spontaneous? Do you just sort of get in and go and see where the road takes you? It is a mixture of both. We, so our plan now is to head uh, in the general direction of north towards Townsville and, and Cairns, uh, North Queensland. Um, but on the way, like we may stop at a place and, and we book in for a night or two or we find a, a free camping spot. And then all of a sudden we just go, wow, this is the most beautiful spot we've been to. Let's stay a week. Or, or, you know, we might just go for a drive for half an hour to the west and see what's out that way. Um, we would like it to be beautifully planned. It never works out that way. And sometimes that's actually a lot better. We, we've found some amazing places in regional areas uh, of, of New South Wales and Victoria uh, where we would we would never have thought of, of going to if we looked at them on the map. We just would have looked at these names and gone, why would you go there? Um, but now we are so glad we did. That's great. And, and um, when, so uh, did you say, when, when did you start traveling Schmidt House? Was it just a couple of years ago or? or uh, uh, yeah, it was last year. Um, and we were right smack in the middle of, of uh, Victoria down south. Mm -hmm. uh, when all of this COVID thing started and our, our premiers, or I guess what you call them as mayors of, of the, um, uh, the states, mm -hmm. uh, decided to shut our borders. So we had to do a mad uh, 1,000 kilometre uh, dash back to our border yeah. um, so, we, so we could be safely back in our home state. 
Um, but yes, pr prior to that, we, we were traveling and seeing a new regional town every couple of days and it was just, just lovely. Absolutely. The people we have met on the road are, are fantastic. Yeah. I think I saw behind you, uh, you you have a pet, uh, made a, made a cameo appearance. Oh, that'd be right. They always seem to manage to do that. That's Wilfred. Uh, Wilfred he's, uh yeah, he's, um, Here's uh, traveling traveling cat and with his little harness on uh -huh. um we've had him since uh about six weeks seven weeks old and that's all he knows he just knows traveling in the van oh, loves so, it yeah so there you go they uh so um tours along with you and uh that's that's pretty cool tell us a little bit about how uh, you know here we've got a really in our rv community it really is truly a family, like a community here and, and people meet up and they, there's that instant connection in, in so many of the cases where, you know, friends or friendships are made and, and families almost are, are formed because of the, the, the shared common interest in RVing. Similar there? Absolutely. Yes, very much so. And, and we never noticed it, obviously, until we started traveling it ourselves. Um, uh, prior to, to becoming a, a traveler, uh, we always used to, I guess, laugh at the other caravans on the road and say, oh my God, you know, there's another slow driver and what have you. Um, yeah. uh, then once you're in it, you, you realize why people drive slow. And, and one, it's for safety, obviously, first and foremost. Um, and second, it's so you can actually see the sights. And uh, I'm not too sure if they do it over in the States, but uh, every time you drive past another caravan on the road, uh, you've got your hands on your wheel and you'll just lift your fingers and say hi. Uh, they do the same thing back, every caravaner. Um, when you're holed up into a, uh, or you pull up into a place, uh, you set up, you get everything red, five o'clock hits and you grab your glass of wine and, and, and your, um, your biscuits and your dip uh, you, and you will have people just out of nowhere come and say hello to you and, and have a chat because you've all got something in common. You've all got your caravans, you're all traveling, you've all seen different places. And the one thing that we have found is the tips and tricks that people pass on to you is is incredible things you would never have known and, and people who have been doing this for years and years and say yep we used to do it that way too yeah. but we found that if we do it this way it's a lot safer or it's a lot better for you so the knowledge is incredible that you pick up from people yeah and and uh, that's n pretty common here i mean we we hear that a lot of times with particularly with people that are new to rving uh you know and they're on the road and they meet some veteran uh, travelers that have been doing it for years, decades even. And uh, they, they pick up tips, like you're saying, they just, you know, gain all this great knowledge and, and uh, kind of skip ahead in the manual, you know, they're able to kind of, you know, figure out exactly what they're doing with, with all this help. And, uh, you know, another cultural phenomenon, and I'm, I'm, you know, here in the States, we have dialects. Uh, you know, it, depending on what part of the country you're in, in the South, it, it, there's, a, there's a very distinct dialect. In the Northeast, there's a dialect. In Midwest, is it the same there? Are there, are there a lot of, you know, we have, I guess, to our ear, to our, you know, just, again, going to television and movies, you have a very sort of distinct, uh, common Australian accent that we hear. Your ear uh, is yeah. more finely tuned having living there do you find that there are different dialects around around the country around the continent absolutely and and even being you know uh, obviously australian and, and all my life and uh, having traveled uh, quite extensively even prior to doing um, the rving uh, we can tell straight away exactly what state you are from oh really um, okay yeah, yeah um it, it and it's it's not so much the actual uh, pronunciation or, or your your dialect it's it's more of just what you might call things um uh like like, like a glass of beer for example uh, a small one would be called a pot where i'm called for just a small pot of beer 
Uh, you come come from down south and it would be called a, a midi or, or something else. And, and as soon as they ask for that at a bar, you go, oh, you're from Victoria. I know where you're from. Um, <laughs> That's terrific. I, I just love that. I'm such a fan of that because here in the States, we have different names for the same thing, you know, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, and, and it's funny how you brought up a, a beverage and here, you know, with food and stuff, you've got uh, you know, we have a sandwich that's, you know, in a bun, in a roll. And, uh, it's, you know, at some places they're called subs and other places they're called hoagies and heroes and grinders and po boys. And it's all that we're all talking about the exact same thing, except yep. it depends on what, where you're standing, you know? And, uh, and, and that's great to know that it's, it's just like that where, where you are. And, um, and it's, uh, I just think that's fantastic. So one more time, if you wouldn't mind just uh, letting folks know where they can find your travels and, and track you down and see your beautiful part of the world. Absolutely. Our, our Instagram is just literally called the Traveling Schmidt House. Um, that's S-C-H-M-I-D-T, uh, just like your Mike Schmidt. Um, yeah. Uh, and we also, it, it's all linked to our website and, and what have you. So once they go, but we generally use Instagram as our first and foremost. Yeah. Terrific. Last question for you. Um, have you been outside? Uh, have you traveled any other spots on the planet or are you, are you pretty much just, I mean, I'm not talking about obviously with your, your RV, but, but, uh, just in general, have you gone to visited other places around the world? Oddly enough, I have been to the States on the West Coast, um, all from uh, San Francisco down to Tijuana across to Las Vegas. The standard touristy thing, I think, when anyone goes over. Yeah. Um, several years ago now, I'm, I'm sure it's changed. And uh, j just traveling down that West Coast, th there are some beautiful places. Um, I I'm not sure if you know the West Coast very well, but, yeah. um, but yeah. um, uh, Carmel, Solvang, all, all those places just, incredibly beautiful incredibly yeah, no beautiful. question the, the the north northern coast of california is one of the uh, most beautiful places on earth i mean uh it is you know like you said carmel and monterey and big sur and different places like that yep. breathtaking and, and and you know would, yeah go ahead go ahead i would say would love to do your east coast would love to yeah there's fun things on the east coast too that's kind of where i'm from and and it there's a lot you know it's it's different uh, depending on where you are. I know up in the New England area, northern part of the country, n northeast coast, very rocky and rustic, and uh, so a lot of very beautiful spots. And then, of course, as you get further south, it, it sort of flattens out and becomes, uh, you know, a big horizons and to the sea, and it's, it's also quite beautiful. But uh, Are you being affected by this storm at the moment? Fortunately for us, we're not. Um, we, we uh, yeah, we are a lot further east of where the impact zone was in the uh, in the Gulf Coast, um, yep. specifically Louisiana, Texas area, areas were were hit yeah. hard. However, in the reports that I've seen, uh, although it was pretty pretty heavy hit, um, not to the extent, fortunately, that they had predicted um it did it didn't quite have the impact and and i think the storm moved through relatively quickly and didn't have the storm surge and the kinds of things and the kinds of devastation that they were anticipating so i guess that's some good news uh so you know we'll we'll see but uh, the storms are getting more and more uh you know they're, they're you're becoming more intense as the years go on do you have those kinds of things there? Do you, do you have to deal with cyclones of any kind? Our last huge cyclone in, in where I am was back in 1974. Oh, um, okay. However, uh, North Queensland, uh, Townsville, um, uh, in Cairns, again, the tropical parts, they cop it every year mm -hmm. and, and they cop quite severe ones too. And, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, it, it's devastating. Um, it, it, you know, it cuts off the entire townships from the rest of the state. Um, uh, but it, it, it's quite a remarkable spirit up north. Um, they, they're so used to it now, they just bunker down in the nearest pub and wait for it to pass. 
Smart thinking. That's that's yep. <laughs> that's terrific. That's great. Well, Pete, listen, we we uh, really really enjoyed spending some time with you, learning about Australia and and about your adventures with you and and your wife Sarah. Uh, we'd love to have you on again. It'd be great to have you. Absolutely. On. Yeah. As soon as we get moving again, we will certainly be back in contact. It's uh, and, yeah, let's and do let that. you know that'd all be, about it. That'd be that'd be terrific. Uh, listen. Uh, best to you and and sarah and stay safe and well and uh we'll talk again soon thank you very much tom really appreciate it pete schmidt is from traveling schmidt show and you can find them on instagram right there traveling schmidt show uh, spelled just like it sounds and uh, you're watching the r and listening to the rv advisor podcast i'm tom alexander we'll catch you next time so long everybody <laughs>